Hello there, everyone. My name is Steve Brigida. Uh, here I am at Point Doom Beach in Malibu, California, enjoying my freedom that the Lord has blessed me with. Um, I was serving a long time in prison. Lived a pretty tough life before uh, before I went there, getting hung up uh, with drugs and partying and breaking the law. Finally did something that got me put in prison for uh, for a life sentence. I shot a cop when I was 18. Uh, fortunately, he didn't die. Uh, but uh, it was a really bad mistake. I regret it. And uh, like I said, I wound up doing a long time in prison over it. Almost 30 years in California's worst prisons. But the blessing was in 2001, I started my time in 1987, but in 2001... I had something happen to me that convinced me that God existed. It was a demonic experience, so right away some people may say, oh, that's crazy, no, demons exist. And I reason that if demons exist, then that means, guess what? God exists. You don't have one without the other. And uh, I decided, well, i got to find out who God is since God exists. And uh, I read the Bible, and it made perfect sense. It made sense out of what was wrong with me, why it is I couldn't stop doing the things I was doing. It made sense out of what was wrong in the world. Why is the world so screwed up? And uh, everything in there rang true. Uh, and I realized what was wrong with me was that I was, I was in rebellion against God. And I was, I was a sinner. I wasn't just doing things that were wrong. But I was actually sinning against God. I was breaking God's law. And for the first time in my life, I finally cared about what I was doing that was wrong. I never cared before. I just did it and basically had no conscience about it. But reading that Bible and understanding I've been breaking God's law and I was going to have to face him on Judgment Day, guess what? That wakes a person up. And as I continue to read and I read through the Gospels and I read about who uh, Jesus is, what he came here to do, uh, I became completely convinced that Jesus is the Son of God, according to what the Bible says. That the Scriptures actually did prophesy about his coming, that he would die on a cross, that he would die for the sins of the world that he would be the only way for a person to be forgiven to find uh, find their way to God so that when they die they could be assured that they're gonna uh, spend eternity in heaven in the kingdom of God and uh, so I'll just a quick rundown for those of you who don't know the Lord um, know this uh, you're a sinner you were born a sinner no matter what your sin is and if God says it's sin then it's sin whether you're lying or stealing you're caught up in sexual immorality and I know it's popular today uh, to say that uh, homosexuality isn't a sin and there are people that claim to be Christians that say that. Well, the Bible says something different. God says something different. Uh, no one hates you for it, uh, but just know that it's a sin and that's something you have to repent of in order to be saved. I don't care how good of a person you think you are. Uh, none's good according to the Bible. No, not one. We're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. And uh, God knows this about us, but because he's merciful, because he's gracious, because he's loving, God already had a plan before eternity, before he ever created the heavens and the earth. And by the way, you are created. You didn't evolve from pond scum from millions of years ago. Um, we're not even going to bother debating that right now. But uh, God knew all this ahead of time, and he'd already made plans for your redemption. And uh, the thing is, though, is you have to do something. Now, there's no amount of good works you can do. What God requires of you is repentance and faith. So what is repentance? Repentance uh, comes from a Greek word that means literally to change your mind. You have a change of mind about, about your sin. You turn directions. You stop living life for you, and you decide, I'm going to start living for God. That's repentance. And the other thing then is faith. And this is key. You must trust Jesus Christ 100% alone for salvation. If you think that, well, I can trust in Jesus, but I still got to do something, well, guess what? That's not going to help you. There's nothing you can do. You already blew it. All it takes is one sin, as Adam and Eve found out. The first time that they sinned, that was it. They were cut off from God. And from that moment, they began to die. And if they would have died in that condition, they would have been lost forever. But God provided salvation for them, just the same way he's provided salvation for us. Um... The benefits of it. Well, I mean, not only do I have a uh, an eternal, I have eternal life ahead of me, but 
It's changed my life for the better right now. After all those years of being stuck on drugs and stuff like that and, and doing all the sinful things I was doing, when, what happens when you get saved, you become born again. Before we're born again, the Bible teaches that we're spiritually dead. That's why the things of God, they're foolishness to us. We don't like them by nature. We rebel against them. Um, but what happens when you put your trust in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you, and He changes your heart. Your whole outlook on everything changes. Completely different perspective. The way you start thinking changes immediately. And with your thinking changing, and plus the, the power that the Holy Spirit gives you to live a life for God changes everything about you. It's called transformation. And it's one of the keys how you can see when someone's gotten saved. Not just by what they believe, but how they begin to, to talk and the things that they begin to do. Um, anyone out there that's, that's maybe watching this and you're like, man, you know what, that's what I need, I would just tell you this. Just tell God, you know, hey, I need to know if you're real, and if you'll show me that you're there, then, uh, then I'm actually going to do something about it. God already knows your heart, so, you know, a lot of people say, well, I tried that Christianity stuff, it didn't work. Well, it's because, really, you weren't looking for those answers. When God, when God came at you with things that you didn't like, uh, maybe he said, you know, he convicted you of sin in your life in certain areas, and you decided you're going to keep going your own way well no wonder why then god doesn't save people who won't repent no matter how much they claim to believe in jesus but if you want a new life in christ if you want eternal life if you want to live forever in the kingdom of god think about this forever and ever okay then you are going to exist for eternity somewhere the bible teaches you're either going to wind up in hell for all eternity paying for your sins but god doesn't want that for you that's why he sent jesus or you're going to wind up in the kingdom of god forever and uh, forever is a long time this life is maybe what? Maybe you live 90, 100 years, so what? You know, that's nothing. Eternity is just, a, it's mind-boggling to think about the amount of time that is. It's just endless. You are going to exist somewhere forever. Make sure it's in the kingdom of God. God bless you. Amen.